Well, it's really good to be here and see you all in person. You know, when we did the final round interview with Jane and Joe and Erica and Anne, uh, they were telling us about this huge community of people who are collaborating in San Mateo on behalf of uh, early literacy. And they were describing like hundreds of organizations. And I almost didn't even believe it. I said, wait, you have hundreds of organizations who are coming together under one umbrella uh, on a common cause? Uh, and to actually be in the room and, and see you guys is uh, really exciting and gratifying. So I appreciate the opportunity just to spend a little bit of time with you guys. So I was asked to say a little bit about uh, myself and, and my journey into this role and then a little bit about Google.org's kind of philosophy around giving and how the Google Impact Challenge came together. Uh, so I promise to be relatively brief, and then if you guys have questions, I'm happy to answer them. But I thought I'd start uh, with my own kind of early literacy story, because um, as I was kind of reflecting on this work and everything you guys are doing, it kind of took me back uh, to me as an elementary school kid. Now, my mom was a teacher, so I could not get away with being a knucklehead too much in the classroom, right? So I always had to uh, to, to keep my stuff together, but I, I was never really a top student. Um, I remember my mom taking me to one of those gifted and talented testing things like as a little kid, and I definitely didn't make the cut. Um, and I would get those standardized test results back, and I'd always be like somewhere in the middle, um, which is fine. My parents were very encouraging of that. Um, but I had like a really transformative uh, teacher in the fifth grade, uh, Mrs. Spingelt. And Mrs. Spingelt had this thing where she uh, cut out these little pictures of spaceships. And she put all of our names, I can still see this yellow spaceship with my name on it in my head as clear as day, uh, with a little magnet on the back. And uh, she had one of these whiteboards in the room and we all started with our little spaceships on the bottom. And every single book that we read and every report that we turned in, you got to move your spaceship up just a little bit, right? Uh, and they had a, a bunch of really cool incentives to get you to actually read these books and move your spaceship up. So uh, right before the holiday break, there was like a Godfather's pizza party for the kids who had made it a certain distance. And at the end of the year, there was like a wild waves trip to, you know, our, our water, our local water park that we would get. So I was like motivated by that. Uh, and then very early on, the girl that I liked in the class was like moving up a lot. So I was like super motivated to stay up there uh, with her as well. And long story short, I just started reading a lot of books. So I read like all the Hardy Boys books. And once I ran out of Hardy Boys, I started reading Nancy Drew books. Um, and I just was like working my way through all these books. And I think I read something like 50, 50 books that year. And I ended up with me and that girl I like, we're like right at the very, very top, our little spaceships up there. Um, but I didn't realize the impact it was gonna have. I literally like that year of reading like changed my life and changed the trajectory. And so. I literally, if you go look at my standardized test scores after fifth grade, they just are up and up and up. And by high school, you know, I was, I was doing very, very well in my classes. I matriculated into engineering school and studied engineering. I decided that I wanted to have more of a social impact, so I did some nonprofit consulting after undergrad. Uh, I ended up with two master's degrees, one in business, one in policy, and then five years in a nonprofit. So are any of you familiar with the nonprofit Year Up? Uh, show of hands, you guys are familiar? Okay, good, lots of folks know Year Up. So, um, after graduate school, I actually spent five years in the Washington DC site of Year Up. And I had this kind of like strategy and business background, so they wanted me to do kind of business development and operations. But I told them, look, I, I have a whole career to focus on strategy, and I, I would really like to be a frontline program manager. Like, I want to teach classes. I, I'd like to do some of the social work, like really get like the frontline perspective. So I was in the trenches, and I don't want to make it seem like it was all a fairy tale story. It was really, really challenging, difficult work. Um, my coworkers really made me earn it and prove it. It wasn't just like I was riding in. They said, look, you got to earn your cred here. Um, and so I really like, spent five years on the ground doing that. And after those five years, uh, I don't know how, but Google in its ways found me and, and plucked me out of there. And here I am on the other side of the table now doing philanthropy, which is honestly a little bit surreal. But I kind of got dropped into this work a year and a half ago. It was in the height of the tech backlash, so quite an interesting time to be the public face of Google's giving in the community at a time when there was a lot of community backlash. And they literally said, look, we, we are among the largest largest corporate philanthropies in the Bay Area already. But uh, if you asked all of you folks, like, do you ever see Google's impact in the community? Most of you would probably say no. And so my mandate was to change that, to actually have a, a giving strategy that reached into the community uh, and really made a difference, particularly in low-income and underserved communities. So 
I told you I was an engineer, so I'm a data geek, so I, I did all the data mapping and the analysis, and I, I don't have to tell you guys what I found. It's all the stuff you know. We have the highest inequality in the country. It's growing faster than anywhere. All of these huge, huge challenges, housing displacement, all the rest. And so I really looked at those and said, okay, look, Google's a part of all of that. We're part of the challenges. There's a lot of benefits to having Google here, but there's also a cost to the Bay Area. And so how can we create a giving program that really addresses some of those things? So we focused on jobs and housing uh, as two really primary issues uh, to focus on to start. And that's been a lot of investment in youth employment. It's been a lot of investment around homelessness. Uh, and then the Bay Area Impact Challenge. And so this is a program that I co-lead. It's actually a global program. Most people don't know that, but uh, we actually have one running in Germany right now. Uh, right before the Bay Area closed up, there was one in France. So this is a, a global program. So you guys should feel proud because you're literally among you know, a handful of organizations across the entire world that's actually uh, been a finalist in one of these things, the top 10 organizations all over the world. So you're joining organizations from Japan and Australia and France and all those other places in the world is really, but Google's gone out and scoured all these communities across the globe and really identified the most innovative work that we feel like is happening in communities around the world. So you guys are really an incredible company uh, and we're really excited to have you as part of that family. And um, w you know, when we saw the application uh, and we did the interview, like I said, I think what was most impressive is not only the social impact that you guys are gonna have, although you know, there's lots of organizations out there pursuing the goal of early learning and literacy, but gosh, this collective impact and collaboration is just really amazing. Uh, and the fact that all of you are rolling up your sleeves together, you're willing to put some of your own individual interests aside and to be able to pursue the collective goals is really impressive. And I think that caught all of our imagination uh, and was really exciting. And then on top of that, the fact that you guys are focused on STEM and how do we really bring uh, science and technology and innovation uh, into that literacy movement, I think is really exciting. So we're super proud of what you guys are doing, excited that we're able to welcome you into the Google family and become part of the collaboration in your family. Uh, in addition to the money, I know the money's nice, but I think maybe even more powerful than the money is you now have access to all of the Google family, YouTube and the driver's cars and however else you guys want to leverage all of that ecosystem, the Google glasses, whatever you guys want to run with your imagination and leverage that to your benefit. Somebody before this meeting even was asking me about Google Express and is there a way we partner with Google Express? And I said, well, I don't know anyone on the Google Express team, but I can certainly go knock on their door and ask them. Uh, and so they'll, you'll actually get a dedicated nonprofit manager uh, who is a Googler who's going to volunteer their time to be that conduit for you guys into the company. And anything that you can dream up, we'll do our very best to try to uh, bring some of those other resources to bear and support you guys in the incredible work you're doing. So I will um, stop there. If you have questions, I'm ha go easy on me, okay? I know, it, uh, you know, the Bay Area and tech and all the rest. I'm happy to answer questions about that if you'd like to, but... Um, are, are there any questions? You guys, would you like me to speak on anything? Yeah, Jane, did you have a question? No, no, we're just looking for yeah, I think Jane actually has a question. <laughs> yeah, I was just... Are turned. Now, I was asking you all the questions a month ago. Now you get to ask me some. Yeah, I was just interested if you have any perspective on how um, philanthropy is evolving in the Silicon Valley companies that are your peers. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I, what I'm seeing right now, and this is just, I honestly haven't spent a lot of time stepping back and reflecting on this, but I'm seeing a lot of uh, individual philanthropists step up. So you're seeing, especially in the tech community, you're seeing the Mark Zuckerbergs and Mark Benioffs of the world really come in in significant ways and make uh, really large, large gifts. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I'm not seeing the same level of philanthropy uh, out of a lot of the other tech companies themselves. So if you look at where the dollars are flowing, I think a lot of the companies are doing a lot of community outreach and collaboration. I'm sure you guys are collaborating with a lot of those companies. Um, but in terms of the actual philanthropy piece of it, like the top 75 corporate givers in the Bay Area, a lot of the older tech companies like the Intels and the HPs of the world are certainly there, but you don't really see the Apples and the Facebooks and uh, Twitter, I think just for the first time, cracked the top 75. So I'm, I'm, I think we're still not seeing a lot of philanthropy actually coming uh, out of tech companies. I'm always, I'm at the table with all of my counterparts, I mean, like, it, it's a little lonely over here, guys. It would be great to have some of you, you know, join us in, uh, particularly in the, in the sort of transformative size gifts and philanthropy. So, um, so yeah, it's, I think it's interesting. But then on the flip side, you're seeing 
uh, philanthropists like uh, Zuckerberg and Benioff give hundreds of millions of dollars, which is a lot of people kind of conflate that with the company and think that Facebook and Salesforce are giving those dollars, but it's really incredibly generous personal philanthropy. And our founders are a lot quieter in their philanthropy than those guys, so a little bit of a different situation. So I don't know if that helps, but that's kind of just raw reactions. Well, we're so we're so pleased to have you here. Thank you so much. Um, I've always heard that with the Google Impact Challenge grants, that not only is there just like a check that's given, but it really opens the door to an engagement. Yeah. And it's engagement by individuals, you know, in your company. And could you talk a little bit more about what that, how that engagement may go for Big Lift or what those opportunities might be? Yeah. And is it, you know, for one year or multiple years? Yeah, so there's a couple of things we do. I mean, one, for all of the um, top 25, uh, we sponsor memberships to the Impact Hub. So that's like a community in a physical space in San Francisco that's available. And we do, you know, I've been to a couple of these trainings. We bring Google trainers in to train. So I went to a negotiations training where it's like our negotiation trainers are training uh, nonprofits on how uh, to, to negotiate uh, and, and skills like that. So, I, so there's a little bit of formal training and formal collaboration that happens. And then what I was talking about with your Google ambassador, right, your nonprofit manager, your go-between, um, that's really like a bottoms-up grassroots thing. It really depends on your needs uh, and what that person is able to go and get done in the company. I've seen all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, our Google AdWords team will come in and, and help you figure out how to, uh, most people don't know this, but every nonprofit is eligible for $10,000 of free Google AdWords every month. So like how do we help nonprofits make sure they're utilizing um, those programs or organizations that want to switch over to Google Apps and be on Gmail and Hangouts and things like that or um, what are some of the other things I've seen? I mean, we have like some of those incredible kind of business operations people. So it's like, you know, tighten up strategy. We have an incredible marketing arm. So sometimes people are like to the point of like social media, like how do we get our social media presence up? I mean, literally Google is astonishing in its breadth of the things that it does. And so but nothing happens in the company top down. It's a very decentralized place. And so anything that gets ha done and within the company happens from the bottom up, which is why we connect you to a Googler who's working full time on a team who can be that person to just rally the troops. Uh, and so whatever you say, hey, look, this is our dream and this is what we'd really like, like that person is almost like a community organizer within the company to go get that done. So it happens in a little bit more of an informal way, but I've really seen some incredible, I mean, a lot of the winners from last year will tell you that that, Google or support has been more impactful uh, than the money, which uh, is always a little bit surprising, but also encouraging to see that it's actually working that way. Hi, um, I'm Ed with uh, Adventure More, and we run Camp Edmo. And when I speak with other camp owners, um, especially, especially programs that are, are trying to serve low-income youth, one of the biggest challenges uh, providers face is transportation. Yeah. So I'm going to put you a little bit on the hot seat sure. because I'm also a resident of San Francisco, and you know the Google buses have the have a reputation, um, and I would love to see Google, you know, kind of clean up their reputation, maybe do some good things with these buses, yeah. you know, besides ship uh, employees. So yeah. I don't know if there's been any talk internally yeah. uh, about some good that could be done with buses, but I know summer providers could absolutely use yeah. support with uh, transportation. Yeah. It's a great idea. You're not the first one, um, I'll tell you, to the idea of redeeming the, the shuttles. Um, it just has been a non-starter, honestly. I've, been, I've, I've tried a couple of times. Um, even for some of our after-school programs, like we partner with citizen schools to bring kids from like East Oakland to the Google San Francisco office once a week. And uh, transportation is the hardest part, right? How do you get kids across the bay uh, after school? And trying to convince the teams internally from both a logistical and just from a kind of, those buses are pretty hot. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of like a, a lightning rod. And uh, there was actually a proposal a while back to, um, to even wrap the buses with some of the logos of the nonprofits. And even that was a difficult decision because it would be great marketing 
for all of you, but do you want to be affiliated with our buses? I don't know. That's why I was kind of asking the question as myself. I was trying to put myself back in the head of a nonprofit leader and like, well, gosh, we always struggle with marketing. We can never get enough resources to market our program, but would I want my logo on the side of a Google bus rolling through the Mission District? I don't know. Um, so we've definitely talked about it. I think the conclusion at this point has been it's just a little bit too messy to try to, uh, to, try to do it in that way. So we haven't but I'll keep raising it because, yeah, folks like you uh, ask, you know, on a regular basis. And there, I know there's transportation is such a huge challenge in the region. So, yeah, there's definitely an opportunity. Hi, uh, Elisa, and I'm a school board member in Redwood City Elementary School District, and I know Google is moving into the Seaport area. And we have Google employees living in Redwood City, and I know that I'm sure there's Google employees living in each of our communities that we're really concentrating on for the big lift, our more uh, needy communities. And one of the things that we could really use some help on is um, to if there's individuals who'd like to tutor once a week for an hour and you know kind of a tutor mentoring and we have various nonprofits that we work with and it's funny just this week I've met with a couple of them and they're desperate for volunteers right now so is there a way to tap into Google employees particularly ones I'm thinking who live in the community already and maybe on the way home they stop by the school site from four to five and and, and I know I know that's already happening but I'm wondering how could we tap in systematically to help help these nonprofits make that happen a little quicker and yeah. more robustly. Systematically is the key word, and it's hard to do anything systematically at Google. It's a, like I was saying, it's such a decentralized place. So um, yes, the short answer is yes, we should definitely find a way to get more volunteers engaged in the projects around uh, the work that you're doing. You know, We have almost 30,000 employees in the Bay Area, so there's obviously a base of people who are also eager to get out. And we have a whole Googlers Give team who does amazing work really coordinating the volunteer project. But I will say, again, they work in a bottoms up kind of way. So rather than me being able to go over to Googlers Give and say, man, there's a, the Redwood City Schools, there's this project, it's amazing, we should totally send volunteers over there. They more work like they have passionate employees who raise their hand and say, I want to start a project here and I want to recruit my colleagues to come serve with me. And they say, what can we do to support you? We'll, we'll put the project online. We donate $10 an hour for every hour that a, a Googler volunteers. So we'll support that piece of it and help make sure some resources get to the organization. Um, so really the best channel uh, is going to be connect with Erica and team with that Google ambassador to say maybe one of the very first asks is, is how can we mobilize volunteers? Because that would be a huge piece for all of these organizations. Um, you know, and, and particularly for the Googlers, like you said, who live in those communities. Because Googlers are really passionate about getting involved in the community. Oftentimes it just takes a little bit of that bridge, like how to like a, a avenue to actually be able to do that work. So but it really has to be it's gonna have to be a bottoms up sort of employee led uh, type of initiative, which we can definitely help um, to make that happen. Any more questions? Justin, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I was wondering about whether the Googler ambassador would be the person we would talk to if we wanted to know what was the thinking at Google about the quality of your child care and development program, mm -hmm. what choices you make about ch quality and family engagement. That's a great question. Um, yes, that person would probably be the right person to direct questions because they're, again, the person who's going to help you na navigate the Google universe. I've never had a point of contact um, over at the child care centers, so um, I don't really know that side of the house, but I'm sure that's what that's particularly why we give you somebody that's like dedicated to the organization because, again, they can help navigate to that person, and I'm sure we have lots to learn uh, in that area. So. So that's it. Um, we just have one last question for you, Justin. So I, I get to ask it since Jane started this off. Um, are there any examples of you guys um, cooperating with some of your equipment competitors on social impact, like whether it's Salesforce or Microsoft or you name it? Yeah, I mean, we're all at the table together through the Tipping Point SF Gives initiative. So, you know, Daniel Lurie and the team at Tipping Point have done an amazing job of pulling tech companies together. And the Ron Conways and Mark Benioffs of the world really kind of made that call for tech companies to sit at the table. So once a month, we actually do sit down at the table together and talk about the initiatives. I'm trying to think about formal collaboration. I know 
Uh, we're talking with Facebook right now about some work that's happening in, in Bayview. Um, and again, I think for some of the tech companies who um, aren't able to give maybe as much financial resources, like how can we sort of partner together so that we're each providing pieces of the puzzle um, that are sort of our sweet spot to be able to give. Um, so be on the lookout. There should be news about um, some work that we're doing with Facebook pretty soon. And honestly, that'll be a little bit of an experiment. There's, as you can imagine, some skepticism about whether we should be um, partnering with Facebook, but it's on behalf of a really good cause, and our hearts are both in the right place and really trying to uh, you know, improve access to STEM education for kids in the Bayview Hunters Point neighborhood of San Francisco. So yeah, be on the lookout. That'll well, come. I think that's called good cooperation. Yes. You know? We're trying to follow your guys' example. We all don't get along quite as well as all of you guys do. Uh, in this room. So I'm going to have to duck out and leave because I actually have three little girls, six, four, and two. And if I don't leave now, I'm not going to be able to read them their bedtime story tonight. Um, so I got to get back to the city and then get my biking gear on and get back over to Oakland. So um, I apologize for not being able to spend more time with you guys. But um, nice to meet all of you and really uh, good to be able to be in partnership with all of you.